Is anyone else as annoyed about Salt Bay as I am? Because he's literally doing everything that you're not supposed to do. He's cutting the meat before he rests it and he's salting it after he cooks it. Also, he takes this leg of lamb, he like smacks its butt. It's just like so rude. I do not respect him. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cara Nicoletti. I am a butcher at Foster Sundry in Brooklyn, and today I'm going to make a veggie burger. For this recipe, you're gonna need pepitas. You can get them raw and then toast them. Green lentils, a lemon, cashews, bulgur wheat. I like to use beets. I really like that they are red, so they kind of look like a burger. And then mushrooms, they have umami flavor that kind of mimics meatiness. I use xanthan gum in it. It works well as a binder, so I would suggest using it because veggie burgers can sometimes be like a little flaccid and floppy. First thing you're gonna wanna do is get your beets roasting because those take about an hour. Drizzle them with a little bit of oil. And then you're just making a little pocket. So you're gonna roast these at 425 for probably about an hour. When you take the beets out of the oven, they're gonna be super hot. I would wait like 10, 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start getting the onions and mushrooms together. You don't have to be too precious with anything because it's all going into a food processor, so it doesn't really matter. I started making veggie burgers at the shop, and one of the reasons is because eating too much meat is not good for you. It's really actually horrible for you. I have a lot of customers that I see all the time and I worry about them so that when I see those people I can be like, please, for the love of God, will you try this instead? Just tonight, eat a veggie burger. I also don't really like uh, any kind of like soy or fake meat stuff. Like if I'm gonna eat a veggie burger, I want it to taste like vegetables. And this one definitely does. Maybe a butcher developing a veggie burger is a good thing. Mushrooms diced. And you want to cook these till they're soft and the onions are like slightly caramelized. I'm also going to add a couple of sprigs of thyme, a little bit of pepper, and some salt. The salt will kind of help them leach some of their water out. So with bulgur wheat, you don't have to like boil it and cook it. You just have to add it to boiling water and then push it around, cover it, let it sit for like 10 minutes, and it should absorb all of that liquid. And then I'm going to get these pepitas. They're green and raw. I'm gonna get them toasty in a pan. You just put them dry in the pan. You can smell them. They get like fragrant, but you can also hear it. You hear that? Okay, so the water is boiling and I'm gonna throw these lentils in. Um, then you can turn it down to a simmer and just let them go for like 20 minutes. You want them to still have a little bit of a bite to them, but you know, be cooked. So these are starting to soften down, and there's starting to be some like good caramelization on the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna use this lemon to deglaze and get like all the good brown bits off the bottom of the pan. The lentils are done, I strain them, and everything else is ready to go. You add all the mushrooms, onions, bulgur wheat, lentils to a bowl. I'm going to add pepitas to the bowl. Oh, I just fucked up. I just fucked up real bad. I got cocky, I got too confident, <laughs> and I added the pepitas into this bowl. It's not the end of the world. This is all going into a patty anyway. So I'm gonna try to take them out, get them ground up. It's fine. I'm gonna add the cashews in, but you're gonna add the beets. So for the cashews, you want them toasted. You can buy them toasted, that's fine. Um, if you get them raw, just toast them in a dry pan like you did with the pepitas. And you're gonna take half of this mixture and you're gonna add that to the food processor so that you have half of it is like ground into a paste and then the rest of it is left for like texture and bite. And add some oil to get this mixture going. So you're wanting all the beets to be ground and, to, and pureed, and you want it to be kind of like a rough paste. Um, this paste is what's gonna hold the rest of this together. Okay, so you can see that everything's well incorporated. It's kind of like, it's not totally, totally smooth. Uh, it still has some texture. You're gonna add this back into the bowl. I added the xanthan gum in. That's gonna act as a thickener um, and help kind of like bind everything together. 
so that the veggie burger patty is not super crumbly. I'm just gonna put gloves on and mix this with my hands. Super goth lunch lady. <laughs> uh, I just find that it's easier to like get your hands in and work it. My hands are covered in blood a lot, so beets are maybe nicer. My main specialty at the butcher shop is making sausages. It's my favorite thing to do. I find that this is similar to a farce for a sausage. The test with a sausage to see if uh, it's bound well is that it will stick to the back of your palm for 10 seconds if you like leave your palm like this. It's a little different with meat because you're activating different proteins, but this is a good tester to see if it's sticking to your hand, to see if it will stick together. All right, so this is all mixed together, um, and you're just gonna wanna taste it for like salt and acid, um, so you can tweak it before you cook it. So it's gonna be a little bit sweet because there's beets in it and like sweated onions. So I always like to add some extra kosher salt and a little bit more lemon juice. Now you're gonna let it sit and chill for like 20 minutes to let everything reincorporate, now let the xanthan gum do its work before you start forming into patties. All right, it's been 20 minutes, so I am gonna start forming these into patties. You don't have to be too crazy with it. Everything in here is cooked, and you can eat it as it is, so you don't have to stress out about cooking it the right way or all the way through. You could literally sit and just eat this with a spoon if you felt like it. I have a nonstick skillet here with some olive oil. I'm just gonna get it going. You should keep the stove on like medium heat. You just want it warm all the way through and to have kind of a nice char on the outside. I would say three, four minutes each side. I am gonna serve this on a Martin's potato roll, which is the best hamburger bun. It's pillowy, it's sort of sweet. It's the best. I would love a sponsorship, Martin's. I'm like, <laughs> Most of the time I just eat this with like a slice of Velveeta cheese, but today I'm gonna get a little fancy and I'm gonna do yogurt with some sumac in it. I like to use full fat Greek yogurt and I like to strain it. Just throw it onto the paper towel and just the liquid comes out. Sumac is a Middle Eastern spice that's sort of like tart. A little bit of salt too. Some sliced avocados, sprinkle a little bit of salt and also throw some lemon juice on just so that they don't oxidize and get brown. All right, now it is time to build the veggie burger. Blob of sumac yogurt. This is the most perfect avocado I've seen all winter. Some arugula, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yep, holds together real nice. I'm gonna tell you something, that's fucking good. Yeah, sometimes with a veggie burger, when you bite into it, it like, washes out. This one did pretty good. That's a good veggie burger.